us. In the studio, we have with us Ali Salman. He is the executive director of Prime Institute. Thank you very much, Salman Sir, for your uh, availability. Uh, much awaited. But finally, it's been approved, talking about the seventh and the eighth tranche of the IMF program. Uh, 1.17 billion. Well, dollar uh, obviously is getting a lot stronger in the international market, but perhaps rupee uh, seemed to be pretty positive as well. Gained three rupees against the dollar in today's trading. Uh, stock market wasn't very bullish, as I earlier mentioned, primarily because of the floods. Now, sir, IMF program on one side, with all the conditions associated, and the current flood situation, according to S. N. Iqbal Saab, the infrastructure that has been destroyed uh, will require around $10 billion to be back to normal. Now, so $10 billion you're talking about. I mean, in addition to the already existing problems that we had. So what is that supposed to mean? So I think let's uh, put the IMF program in the, in the context, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, we know that the discussion about the IMF revival program was in progress uh, for last uh, several months uh, since this government took over. And we also know that pr the program was practically suspended uh, for a longer time period. And uh, we should definitely welcome the revival of the IMF program. And I think it's a, it's a good news in uh, when the time when Pakistan's economy really needed such a you know, good news. Um, and, and this program revival should not just be looked at uh, in the terms of the uh, dollar's uh, mm -hmm. value, but I think largely um, as a symbol, I would say, of uh, confidence of international financial institutions. And uh, we hope that Perception, basically. Um, perception, but also, I think, the commitment and the credibility. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you look at the IMF program, and if you look at, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is not just a one-way document. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment which the government of Pakistan has provided to the international uh, financial institution, institution to carry out certain reforms uh, mm -hmm. following it. Mm -hmm. And, and certainly, I mean, the, the, the flood situation is going to take a toll on, on, on all of us, on, on the government revenues and on, on the development efforts. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, that the program must continue um, and government should, should uh, you know, g continue uh, and honor the commitments. However, you mentioned about the development aspect, for instance, you mentioned about the $10 billion infrastructure loss. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I have not looked at the numbers uh, and we'd like to know more details about it. But um, I was just doing a, you know, a back of envelope calculation, for instance, uh, if you just consider the private loss versus public infrastructure loss. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the private loss, I think um, uh, I, I estimate that it is about $2.5 billion already, okay. which is uh, the livestock loss and the house is destroyed. So the, if, if the government were to reinvest and especially livestock is 50% uh, of Pakistan rural economy. Uh, but, but the livestock loss is still a very small portion, by the way. Total livestock population in Pakistan is 123 million. And out of that, we have lost about 1 million. So the numbers have to be put in, in, the, in a realistic context because only, only then our appeals um, can be given more credibility. Mm -hmm. And also, since we have experience of uh, you know getting international aid in during disasters, I think a lot more needs to be added. A lot more need to be done in terms of transparency mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, attracting international donors. And that, that is, I think, the government's responsibility to ensure that the appeals are realistic and uh, disbursement is transparent. Because you know, uh, interestingly, normally there isn't much coverage about Pakistani stories in the international or perhaps in the Western media, in particular CNN. But a lot of coverage regarding uh, this, these floods uh, was there on CNN. Um, their correspondents, few sitting in Hong Kong and reporting from there, few in Islamabad. And you know, you were talking about the entire Pakistan. You're talking about from the northern tip all the way down into Sindh, Balochistan, Punjab, KP, and it's right in front of us yeah. what's going on yeah. and tourism perhaps. Uh, was really picking up well in certain yeah. areas like Sawat. But since the infrastructure is gone, I mean, I was surprised to see those visuals when those huge hotels were swept away like anything. And it uh, was very surprising. I but I think we yeah, really we need, need to, to put look in into a, a bigger context and we need to see, how, I mean, the, of course the visuals are, are very effective, but I would like to see greater details about 
you know, the damage done. I think that is going to take another few weeks. Yeah. Additional point to what uh, Akhtas was saying. Uh, I think it is important to, you know, re revisit our PSDB right now mm -hmm. and, and, you know, revisit our priorities. And in, in my opinion, uh, government uh, actually should stop the current allocation of PSDP and give the top priority to Two rehabilitation uh, from the, of the flood affected areas, both in terms of the property, but also in terms of the infrastructure. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, Pakistan, I was going through an article and very interesting analysis uh, were, were perhaps drawn within uh, the first two, three, four uh, uh, paragraphs. You know what it said? It said mm -hmm. because of the geostrategic uh, location of Pakistan, uh, Pakistan cannot default. And then there were few reasons for that also. But so this is a blessing in disguise, unfortunately, isn't it? Yeah, I think we, we have uh, in, in the past, we, you know, our strategy or, or I would say even economic strategy has been largely driven uh, by this belief that our location is, uh, is of critical importance to the region and, and to, you know, to, the, to world powers. And, and that has actually what has, it, it has done to our economic strategy that it has you know, taken away our attention uh, of the potential which Pakistan society, which Pakistan's own private economy, people, enterprises, entrepreneurs have. And mm -hmm. we have looked outside uh, because somehow we are driven by this geostrategic importance uh, perception. I mean, this is true and we can't uh, choose our geography and we can't choose our neighbors. So we are where we are. But I think uh, we, we definitely need to take ourselves out from this perception now and, and, and focus on, uh, on the issues and the challenges. And if you, uh, you know, for instance, we have been uh, in, in this context of the floods, uh, you must have seen those images, for instance, uh, you know, we needed, we need more helicopters who could more be uh, deployed in the rescue operation. Yes, uh, we have helicopters, let's say, in the defense uh, sector, but maybe those helicopters are not well suited for rescue operation, for rehabilitation operations, where we actually need to divert more resources so if you just look at this example of floods and where we need to give more resources, I think this, this, this explains that what, what we need to change. Hmm. Uh, and you know, these natural disasters are unfortunately uh, offers us a stark reminder and, and this is not a very pleasant reminder uh, of how we need to uh, reallocate our resources. I remember in the year 2005 post this very, very unfortunate incident, the earthquake, yes. 8th October, American Chinooks, we had helicopters coming in from South Africa, medical teams from Turkey, mm -hmm. Cuba, you name it. Yes. I mean, the rescue and relief was at its optimum yeah. level. Still, sir, uh, many people were not finally compensated, True. even after 17, 18 years. Now, this is, that was only in a certain area, as big as Switzerland, perhaps. Mm -hmm. This is all over Pakistan. Let me, let me just offer a, a different view here, Faisal, uh, and I'm, I'm very keen to learn more and when, when, when more data sinks in. Uh, then half of Pakistan's, of course, is Balochistan, and, and uh, in terms of the area, mm -hmm. a little bit more than half, perhaps. But only 5% of Pakistan's population is, is in, in Balochistan. So we have to look at the overall picture in terms of the, the damage done. Uh, I'm not trying to underestimate uh, the damage done, but at the same time, I think I don't want to be led just by visuals. Uh, I want visuals to are us, scary. Uh, uh, visuals are believing. scary, but we need to look at the the, the data. Uh, for instance, look at our major urban centers. Right, so we have 40 to 50 percent population in major urban centers of the country, right? And, and fortunately, uh, by God's grace, uh, none of our major urban centers have been affected by by these floods, right? And uh, so, so we need to see where the damage has been done and we need to localize uh, our response accordingly. We, we can't just have a top, so top center, like you know, a top down approach to, to manage this problem. We have to see what, for instance, uh, the zoning issues, for instance, uh, how mm, uh, uh, the buildings were built along the river side. So that is something which we need to- perhaps is the problem. Encroachment. Um, People should not be allowed to build houses there, and, and government has a vast free lands, and, and those people should be encouraged to, you know, uh, given free land and help 
to rebuild their houses. I think there's and a lot houses, uh, by uh, the way. which yeah, depends but, on the on the government yeah. whether you're talking about the provincial government, yeah. district government, or the federal government. That's right. I yeah. think there has to be a proper synchronization. There has to be a proper element of uh, synergy, which is missing. Which, which is, is missing. I think. I know, uh, let me also say something like like on on the political or let's say on the national level. Uh, the Prime Minister called for an APC. Uh, it may be seen positively, but I think there was no need of calling APC right now. We need an NEC meeting right now, the National Economic Council. We need the Prime Minister yeah. to call all the Chief Minister. to take into account and everything and then, you know, and deliver on war footage. NEC needs to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. uh, really function. And I'm very sure that despite of the political differences we have on the, on the parties, I think when you call the those differences should be kept aside for the moment. And they and can always all have the, the government. That, but, the but this is the first priority. The federal so. government and the provincial governments have to uh, work in in you know synchronization. Absolutely. Uh, right now we are not seeing that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Ali Salman. I think we're all have, uh, it is it is right that we will we will experience um, uh, this uh, the heightened inflation if we don't take the the countermeasures, mm -hmm. and obviously the the you know the new crop will take at least three months. But in the short term, and at the, as they say that the no crisis should be waste, every crisis offers an opportunity. If we open Vaga border, as it used to be open uh, before 2016, um, and if you recall the prices of onions and, and you know, the tomatoes and uh, many other vegetables which we used to import through Vaga border, were actually you know, reasonably stabilized uh, because trade uh, offers uh, this opportunity to farmers and consumers on both sides of the border. And you know what trade. the prices are these days of uh, onion and tomatoes? And this should be the short to five, five I know, I have bought it myself. Just I, imagine. I exactly. And so this is a short term solution, uh, but this, this should be maintained uh, across the border. And this is, this is where we pro pro probably need to, to go. One more uh, comment I want you to, in fact, uh, uh, really you know, throw light on is, uh, now so when we talk about the river banks obviously when the rivers will uh, sw and swollen rivers means that you know there are no banks like the visuals that we were going through of uh, Kabul and Sin I mean we had no clue honestly speaking where the bank is because it's just water somebody sent me a picture from a helicopter this Vela honestly just a few houses and it was water everywhere you talk about uh, Nasirabad you talk about Jafarabad, I mean, adjacent areas uh, along with Sindh and Balochistan. S DG Khan, DI Khan, I mean, all over, except for the slightly, you know, uh, inward and uh, those districts which were away from the uh, river, rivers primarily. The floods, they are still there, so another spell most likely is going yeah. to be there in the coming days. I hope it doesn't come. But what I'm saying is that, sir, you, you do not have any control over the nature. Don't you think, sir, like uh, in the 2005 earthquake, uh, when we went through all that, because a lot of people died because of these lenters and the weight of it when it fell, uh, you know, even in the schools and yeah. otherwise in houses. A lot of houses just well, went down. Uh, so so we, we learned, I think, that there has to be a different nature of sorry, construction. Sorry, I'm interrupting you, Faisal, here. But when we when you were mentioning nature and and you know how we cannot control it, I I'm reminded of my in time in Netherlands. So that's and a different uh, ball. I mean, and these and people so have mastered the art of making canals and, and so even are, saying no to human, the sea. They are human beings. They have Rotterdam, learned the look technology. At that. Yeah. They are like historically, it's like low lying uh, country, and how they have built and created you know new new cities from the seas. So I think it's a question of. Uh, the the design. It's a question of allocation of resources. It's a question of putting the right. It's a question money. of will. It's a question of will. It's yes. It's I mean, uh, nature, nature has nature has its challenges, and but then all over the world, uh, the countries have you know learned to live alongside the rivers. Actually, then you know the be most beautiful cities are still like in in Europe, in US, are alongside the river. We don't have such places. We don't. Our cities are like away from the river uh, most of the time, uh, because we haven't really managed uh, the the river banks. We haven't really managed our water canal systems in in that fashion. We have not looked at that aspect. So, so yes, I think nature offers challenges, but also then the human beings. There are opportunities there as well. But anyway, sir, thank you very much, Ali Salman.